How would you characterize the different reactions people have to other religions? Well, there are a lot of them. I mean, you know, in the kind of world in which we live, in the cities in which we live, with multiplicity of religious traditions, one kind of response is what people might call exclusivist, that my religious tradition is true, excluding all these others. There is only this one way to truth, and it is my religious tradition. And of course, there are Christians, there are Muslims, there are uh, even some forms of Hindus and Buddhists who are exclusivist in that sense, that truth is exclusive to our tradition. Then there are also um, inclusivists, and the inclusivist perspective is a little more subtle, and that is that all of the religious traditions can be included in a way in mine. <laughs> I think that it's important for us to hear the language of difference. And the problem with inclusivists or universalists is that everything can't really be reduced to one. And uh, we're not heading toward one world religion. We're not religion. heading toward one world religion. And no one religion can somehow embrace all of the mystery and the multiplicity. And, um, and it's important for us to be able to be in encounter and dialogue uh, with both our differences and similarities. Why? Both for our understanding, um, but also for our mutual discovery of, of what is true as religious people. For our mutual discovery of what is true. Of what is true. That, together. Yeah, together. I mean, when I, when I titled my book Encountering God, what I meant by that was not just that I have encountered the way in which Hindus understand God or uh, in which Muslims understand God and have understood something about their perception, but that in and through the Hindu tradition, I've learned more about the one I refer to as God. I mean, my faith has become deeper and richer as a Christian uh, because of the contribution of, of Hindus. Um, that our dialogue is not really just Can you about give me an example. Well, yes, I, um, I, I could give the example of visiting a Hindu temple and finding um, in the moment when the the curtain is pulled back and the people who have gathered for worship um, express their astonishment at the at the um, at the flowers that have been placed so elaborately upon the image of Krishna, for example. Finding myself caught up in that astonishment myself and um, touched both by this darshan, you might say, or vision of God's presence, uh, and also by the community of faith that I was experiencing this with. So that I learned really more uh, and more richly about what it means to speak of incarnation. What it means to speak of incarnation? To speak of incarnation, incarnation. From Hindus who understand incarnation in such uh, a different way than I do. Um, it didn't change religion, but enhanced. Enhanced my religion. Um, and I feel this has happened over and over. Um, that our dialogue is not simply about understanding one another, but developing a deeper understanding of ourselves. And that true dialogue is, is really mutually transformative. And that doesn't mean that we cease to be who we are, that I abandon my Christian community and become something else, um, or that you abandon the Hindu or Buddhist community and become something else, but that through our encounter with one another, we have a deeper understanding of ourselves and of the mystery of the divine or of transcendence or however we speak of this, um, of this, uh, we have a deeper understanding.